Welcome. What you're looking at is 1.6 million lines from Zeke Logs off of one of my systems. And it's all indexed into Elasticsearch and Kibana. So I can search. It's all full text indexed in. So I can search for phrases and things like that. And what this presentation is going to show you is how you can take your logs, put it in this format, so you can do things like... Boom, typing Google and getting anything that had the word Google in it, like all of these. And then you could pivot on that and say, oh, I want this UID. Put that up here. And just like that, out of the 1.6 million, we have two hits from that UID. So you stick with me, I'm going to show you the technology to take your Zeek ASCII logs and push it into Elasticsearch and search it just like we did. Welcome to Zeek in Action, Zeek2ES.py. And this is Zeek to Elasticsearch, but I'm going to show you at the end, if you don't have Elasticsearch installed, there are ways to still use the Zeek2ES application that you can still harness uh, some of the power of JSON, it just won't be full text index for you. All right, so assumptions. What I'm going to assume is that you have some basic understanding of everything here on the slide. Elasticsearch, Kibana, Grafana, Python, uh, Unix command lines, just basic Unix command, line, Unix command lines, and Zeek ASCII logs. Um, I'm not going to go into the basics of all these. I'm just going to assume that you have worked with them, um, at least to some extent, that uh, when I start showing you some basic commands, it's not going to trip you up. All right, so prerequisites. If you want to follow along and do the same things and um, have your logs like you saw in the teaser, what you need to do is you need to download Last Search in Kibana. Um, there's the link. They're super simple. You download them. Um, if you're on Mac or on Linux, you can expand the tar and then just run them. I open a command uh, prompt and have a tab for each and run each. So that way I can just see what the uh, standard out, because both have standard out that will give you information. So if you run into trouble, that's usually the first place I look. Now next, um, if you run Elasticsearch out of the box, it's fine, but you might run into trouble once you start getting larger and larger amounts of data into it. So I'm gonna show you some things that really uh, trip me up for a few days um, that will hopefully speed you right by these hurdles. One is uh, the line at the top will show you your cluster settings. And I'm showing you that line so that way you can look at your cluster settings because the next few things I'm going to show you are to change your cluster settings. So one of the things I found out was by default, Elasticsearch will use a disk threshold. And a lot of machines that I'm running on the, are where log a lot of logs are stored. And I'm already like in 90% full territory. And the threshold for Elasticsearch starts at 85%. And... If you want to turn that off, you can use the command at the bottom. Um, it's about <clears throat> the specific one of turning the threshold off is uh, about the third line down uh, on the second curl command. Now, another thing I found was you can only open a thousand shards per node, and that is not a lot when you have 24 hours in a day times however many logs that you want to import. And I create an index per log. Um, to keep the A to keep the indices small, B so you can manage them and push out certain log types and dates. Um, mean push out like delete them, um, and so forth. So a thousand is pretty small. So what I did here on my machine is I moved mine up to a million, and it's going to be different for each machine. I did a million. You may not want to do that on your machine. Um, do what makes sense on your machine. Now, let's say you don't want to turn off all those thresholds. You actually want to use the disk thresholds where Elasticsearch will start to disable the writes at certain points and then reads at other points. And there's a three different thresholds you can set. Um, you have to turn the thresholds back on, and then you have to, you can either give it a percentage or you can give it a capacity. 
Here I'm just using examples of 100 gig, 50 gig, and 10 gig. And then at the bottom you see we also have the million shards per node. So I would recommend either turning your threshold off if you're pretty sure you're not going to run your disk out by yourself. Um, I usually watch things and I don't let it get that close. Um, but if you think it might get close, I'd use this curl command and make some thresholds so that way your Elasticsearch instance doesn't overrun everything. If you're a Grafana user, Grafana uh, feeds off of Elasticsearch very, very easily. Um, it installs almost as simply as Elasticsearch and Kibana, but I do recommend one uh, config file change here to put this HP address of localhost. So that way the Grafana port only opens on localhost and does not open on any external hosts uh, because you have your logs exposed. So you don't want to expose them to the world. All right, so Zeke logs. We're talking um, about two different types of logs that Zeke can log to. The first is the default log. If you don't do anything to Zeke and you just run it on a PCAP or um, just run it in cluster mode, you're going to get the ASCII version of logs. And that's a tabular, tab delimited, formatted file. When it's being written to, it's just ASCII. And then when it's done being written to, uh, Zeke will compress it into a GZ file. ASCII is great for things like awk, but bad for things like joins. So when you have maybe a file UID and one log, and you want to compare that file UID to another log, doing joins at the command line and awk and all that makes it very difficult. On the other hand, you can have Zeek output into JSON. And JSON, uh, you can turn it on with the, the white command at the very bottom there, log ASCII, use JSON equals true. And JSON is just JSON. If you're familiar, hopefully you're familiar with it by <laughs> entering this um, presentation, but it's um, it's not the Zeek default. You have to turn it on, um, which is one of the reasons I wrote this program is because I have years of data saved in the other format, in the tab format. Um, so if your logs are already in JSON format, this presentation is not going to really apply to you. Um, you could also push that into Elasticsearch. You can use um, Elastic's uh, file beats to do that uh, simply by itself. Or you could um, just craft the bulk import. Uh, hit me up on the open uh, the open source Zeek Slack server, and I can talk you more through that. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do is switch over to the code and walk you through uh, the different things that the codes will the code will do for you. Now, there's a couple things I want to point out. One is you don't need any external Python libraries. So you could just take this code, and if Python is installed, you can run it. You don't have to pip install anything, which was sort of one of my requirements and the reason why I do uh, the raw requests inside Python. The second is um, log formats in Zeek, as you know, people can change them depending on what's loaded, where, and so forth. Doesn't matter to my code. It reads it, it figures it out, it reads the types, it reads the field names, and it figures it all out and outputs the best type of JSON for the types type information it's been given. So that way, if something is an IP address in Elasticsearch, it's going to be an IP address. So that way you can search it just like an IP address. If it's a date in Elasticsearch, it's going to be a date and you can search it just like a date. It's not gonna be anything um, funky like a floating point where you have to um, you know, do anything uh, crazy to get your data or so forth. It's gonna make, I. In the code, it just reads the logs and makes it for you. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the code and walk you through it. Here we are at GitHub, and I usually put any type of information you need to know in my readme's. So um, if you scroll down here, there's gonna be a whole bunch of information. And if you're watching this video sometime in the future and I've improved this program, you're gonna see this is probably gonna be quite a bit different because as I learn new things, I usually document it for those people using it. Um, so what this is, is it's a Python application that doesn't require any external libraries that will take the Zeek ASCII logs and transfer them over to Elasticsearch. 
If you don't have an Elasticsearch server, you can actually transfer them over to just plain old JSON. So you can use things like JQ to uh, process them further. All right, I give you an example command line here, and I also tell you, which is, you know, running Python, the, um, the application. Here's the log file that's going into it, and then here I'm just saying, here's my index. Um, I could leave that off, and it would try to guess it from, um, it would put it together from the file name, if you wanted. Um, and then you can also take this command and run it against a bunch of files, like for instance here, if you have a directory full of con logs, you could then run it through the parallel command and run Python, this application, it gives it the file name, and it, the file names are coming in through standard in, that's what these characters mean. Down here I give you all the command line options, so um, I've run this in so many different environments, Linux, big, Crunchbox environments, to small Mac OS laptop environments. And these are the commands I've used that I've needed to run them in all the different environments. So uh, depending on what it is uh, you're doing, hopefully I have a command line option for it, including, for instance, you don't have Elasticsearch, but you just want it to come to standard out. I have one of those. And down here I tell you the requirements, which is real simple, just Python and a Unix environment, which Mac OS works for that. Now if we go into our Python program, uh, it's not too terribly complex. Up here at the top is just my imports and setting up all the arguments. And then I do deal with time zone because Zeke does save in whatever the local time zone of the system it is that's recording. So I can do a time zone translation for you. I do some error checking. Basically, if you give it the wrong inputs together, um, it pulls the file name that you'll be processing. It then sets up some processes to then pull out the date from that log file. And then we set up some processes to get the path from that log file. And then, let's see. Here it does some error checking depending on your um, uh, command line arguments. So for instance, um, by default, it will, if there's a, a index there already with that name, it'll delete it and put this new information there. If you don't want that, you can have it check and see if there's an index there. If it is there, it'll quit. Um, and then there's also a state document. I'll talk about it at the end of this, um, down at the bottom of this file. You can also check for that state document and if it's there, it'll, it'll quit. So that's what um, these, some of these lines are doing all up front here. It's just setting it up and if you have an issue, it outputs it. Now let's see. Now here, this is where we, we get our dynamic information from the logs. What we do is we open it up, we pull in all the fields, and then we open it up and pull in all the types, and then we open it up and start reading the TSV. And what that does here is this is just some Python language to open up the TSV and make it into a reader for us. Now, since I figured out the types, I'm able to actually tell Elasticsearch what I want the mappings to be in different fields. So since I know a certain field might be a date, I'll tell Elasticsearch, hey, this is a date. Or here, for instance, here's an address. This thing is an IP address. <clears throat> and then the rest of the, the bulk of it tends to go from here on down. So what I do at line... 195 here is I say for every row in the TSV file in the Zeek log file I create a dictionary um, and I put I just populate it with some metadata information like the, where the log came from and the path information from it and then for every column in the row I then go through and I use some of that dynamic information from the log of the field name and type and I just set up the JSON correctly so you don't have to worry about it. So that's what all of these lines do is it looks for data um, and dynamically puts it in the correct format for JSON. And if anything gets added, uh, this added val for the added value equals true. So if that happens, we come over here and then we say, hey, have we put our mapping yet? And if we haven't, we then put our mapping into ES.
in the last search, which then says, you know, this is what to expect for different fields. And then it basically just starts filling out the um, outstring. Where? Well, let me see if I can. Where's the outstring? Right here. But it, it starts filling up this outstring, and that's what gets either printed to um, Elasticsearch or standard out, depending on how you configure and run this thing. Uh, let's see. So line 250 down here. So there's this configuration option, the dash L, which says lines. And here is where you can configure how many lines or how many rows of your Zeek log will go into Elasticsearch using the bulk import facility. This is sort of an art. Um, I've run on a bunch of different machines and I've looked at the documentation and they say start with a few thousand. I've run this anywhere from a few thousand up to millions of lines. And it just kind of depends on the machine and the data that I'm going through whether or not it's too much where it just overloads Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch dies on you. So I put it as somewhat reasonable default of 10,000, at least at the time I recorded this video. That might be something you want to play with. And what line 250 is, is that's the area where once we get to where that line threshold is, that's when we start crafting our RESTful connection to our Elasticsearch server in order to dump our data to the bulk import. And you can see down here, we basically do the same thing. So down here, we see this, we do the same basic thing that we do up here. And that's the reason, the reason is, is you see the indentations out. And I put a note here one last time, because if there's any information left over in our array or our out string, we want to print it to Elasticsearch before we quit. And then lastly, I may, I use a state document in the same index and what the state document has in it is just the import of log file name and you'll see i use this cop this field or column depending on how you look at it as a key so i can easily search just those logs because i don't name any other one of them zeke log imported file name i tell you how many items we've imported i tell you what the log path was and then um Ba, 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 ba. Let's see the time timestamp that this happened. Uh, if there's a system name, I've also put that in there. And I'm going to show you all this um, in the actual Kibana uh, instance. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say about this. And we're going to go ahead and switch back to the slides. We are back at the slides. And what we're going to talk about next is how to process logs with the code that we just saw. You can do it one log at a time with the command at the top, which is just run Python with the script, whatever your account, whatever your log is that you want to import. And then you could say, this is what I want my index to be. Now, if you leave the dash I off, it'll actually create the index from information from the log. So just trying to show you some different options here. So what if we want to do more than one log? And if you're familiar with Zeek, you know, Typically, it opens up a log an hour, and then there's 24 hours in a day, and there's X amount of logs in your system, let's say 10. So now we're already talking about 24 times 10, 240 logs, times seven days a week, times four weeks in a month, and your logs just start adding up. So how can we run this logic that I showed you on more than one log? There's two ways you can run it. One is if you want to just run it in serial fashion, like one after another, and you wait for one to quit before you start the next one, you can use the find command, and then I'll show you that in the next slide. And But typically what I do is I like to run something in parallel, which I can kick off X amount of jobs depending on how big my system is, and it will just take care of whatever's in the queue until they're all done. So the find command is pretty simple. You run find, whatever directory you have your logs in, whatever name you want to use, and here I'm just showing on that log. Another option I didn't put in the slide that you might want to use is the dash regex option. That way you can get a little fancier with the name. But here we're going to get a list of files that you want to process with the find command using any of the find commands options. Then at the end what we have is it runs Python wherever our Zeek to ES PI or uh, Python script is. 
Um, it could be in your home directory here. I'm just, just kind of assuming it's in your path. And then the curly braces say whatever fine path that we have, it's going to plug it in there. And then this is just the escape character to finish our find command. So it'll run on anything that matches con.log in that directory. It'll run our script on it um, one after each other. Now in the parallel command, uh, we use the find command in the same fashion, so I'm not going to go through this again. What we do is we pipe it through the parallel command, and that says open up five jobs. Each job is going to be, or we're allowed to run five con concurrently. And what those jobs are going to be are Python 3, Zeek2es.py, and then it just like before with the find command, it plugs it in, uh, plugs the file name in here. And then the this here tells Parallel that I'm getting I'm getting my tokens from standard in, and that's what find command is doing with the pipe command or the pipe. Okay, now let's say you've processed everything on your system and you just wish you didn't have to run this in a cron job or something else. Well, on Mac and Linux system, there's this magical utility called FSWatch. Um, I'm showing the Linux command here, um, and I'll just make a tangent. This dash M poll monitor, I found you need that on a Linux system because the I notify wait monitor just doesn't work that well. At least it didn't work well for me. Um, so I switched over to the poll monitor, and everything worked great. Um, Mac, I don't believe, has a poll monitor. I can't remember. Um, so you may not need the dash M poll monitor on a Mac is what I'm saying. So what FSWatch does is I'm running it, I'm selecting my monitor, and I only want to output events of created on files recursively, the dash R, in this data logs directory. It's just a fictitious directory. And I'm piping that. So you can imagine FSWatch, anytime a file changes, now you get the output. The output is the full path name of the file that just was created. I may have said changes. I meant created. And that's getting sent to awk and here i'm just using awk as a glorified grep because i've had grep issues with piping um, and not so much with awk so i'm just doing an awk uh, regular expression here where i'm looking for my con.log in there in a path and i'm piping that to parallel five jobs python and i'm running my um, zeek2es.py and it's plugging in the file name there and the dash C mode in the script I wrote means if you see an index there, don't just die. Um, don't don't try to add it or don't delete it. And then the four colons in the dash just tell, or just signifying to parallel that it's getting the path names from the standard in. All right, so I've already run that because um, it's boring and it just takes maybe 10 minutes on my system. Um, and it's going to vary on uh, the different systems that you run on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you my data in Kibana. And I'm going to show you a few little tips and tricks that I've learned um, in order to just get you on your feet. Because if you don't know these things, a lot of times it can be very frustrating. All right. Here we are at my Kibana instance. And usually if you come in here for the first time, you... See all these errors down here? Oh my gosh, there's nothing in here, no results. I can't click and really do a whole lot. And <clears throat> when you get into this, don't panic. It's usually just because something is not configured right. Um, one of the things that is not configured right here is we don't have our Zeek indices being looked at by Kibana. We only have these log stash, and we're not using log stash for our application, so we need to go make an index pattern, which is what this drop down box pulls from. You do that by going into stack management, and there's an index patterns under Kibana here. And we can create an index pattern of Zeek star. And it says, hey, it matches all these sources. Sweet. We need to pick a timestamp field. And we're going to pick our timestamp field, the trusty old Zeke TS. Create index pattern. And it's that simple. 
Now, with any luck, we go back to Discover. And it says, oh my gosh, no indices found. But if we come here, switch down to Zeke, you know what? I made a mistake. Ah, but it still worked. You see the double star there? That's actually a mistake, but it actually works. So <laughs> I do this all the time. I put the double star, and then I go back, and I take the star out. But apparently double star still works. So we'll just leave it for the purposes of this video. All right. So I imported um, in the last couple of weeks just a bunch of logs off of a laptop system. And you can see it's about 1.6 million here. If you did not see data and you switched your index uh, pattern over here, a lot of times it's because of this field. Here it remembered because before I was looking at the last two weeks of my data, it just remembered that I wanted to look at the last two weeks of my data again. But a lot of times what this will do is go back to the default of 15 minutes, and 15 minutes will be this little, tiny little sliver over here and you won't get to see this pile of data and it'll look like you have no data in here and nothing will populate through here. So go in here, switch it to an interval that represents what you want to see in your logs is my next recommendation. Once you figure that index pattern and this thing out, the next thing that usually gets you is the query. So if you're not seeing what you want here, it might be because you have a query left in here that says, you know, I was looking at X and everything else means Y. So, all right, what do I want to show you now? These documents at the top, you can see I did record it today on New Year's. Um, these are the state documents. And you remember I showed you Zeke log imported file name, that column or field, depending how you look at it. There's the log name and all that. So let's say we wanted to look at just the state documents. That's easy. Click up here, the um, Kibana query language actually will show you uh, all the different fields that you have and can pick from. But what we want to do is say Zeke log imported file name, any value there. And then that way, if a document doesn't have this column, it won't show up. There we go. 1,377 hits. So there's 1,377 document state documents in my Elasticsearch index, which is pretty cool. Now let's say I don't care about my state documents. I just want to get to my juicy logs. I'm going to put a not in front of there. So it means anything else that doesn't have this field in it. I know this field is unique because I wrote the program and I put this just in the state documents. There you go. There's our 1.6 million. And you can just flip through some of these. Here's a DNS log, it looks like. you know. Click on these for you. Look at all the columns. Things show up as IP addresses or true false booleans. You know, I try to get, uh, if, it, if it was a array in Zeek, I tried to make it an array in um, JSON. I try to keep it as close to JSON um, perfect as possible. Uh, I guess that's it. Um, I showed you in the teaser about Google, searching for Google. I'm searching for particular um, uh, UIDs. Let me grab another UID that I'm going to show a little later. Let's search for a UID here. You see 152 hits? Look how quick that was. I just went in there, said that UID out of 1.6 million, we just pulled up in any log that has a column name UID pulled up this magic thing. So you just correlate it, you inherently correlated the logs. If there were other logs, I don't know if we'll have any examples here because I didn't import a ton. These are all, seem to all, be all DNS, but anything else, there's gonna be a DNS, there's gonna be a con and so forth. Um, all is, it'll all be intermingled in here based upon the timestamp. So it's a pretty sweet way to analyze stuff. This is the con uh, UID that I'm going to use in the JQ example coming up, and I just wanted to show you what it looked like under Kibana and how fast it was. All right, that's all I'm going to show you here. Um, I didn't really want to get too deep into how to use Kibana. Maybe I'll do that in a different uh, video, but I want to show you how you get your data in there for the people that uh, use Elasticsearch and 
have been waiting to get Zeke in there. Welcome back to the slides. Let's say you want to get rid of all your data now, which happens to me a lot. I import something, then I don't. I want to go look at something else. Um, it's very, very simple. With You can get rid of all the data that I imported with this curl command, which sends a delete um, RESTful um, request, and it says delete anything with Zeek star. And you can get um, a little more fancy with this now if you save the indices in there like I did. When If you use the automatic method like I showed you, it'll have a Zeek and a date. So you could say Zeek underscore and whatever date you want star, and then that way just delete a certain day or a particular hour if you want to get down to time. Um, bu -bu -bu. All right, so that's the delete command. And then for the people that say, hey, I can't run Elasticsearch or, um, you know, it's too much processing power, too much disk power or whatever. You could still get the same basic filtering functionality without the full text index with an application called JQ. And what I'm showing you here is you basically process things the same way where you use your find command and you pick out your logs and you execute this Python, um, the Zeek 2ES Python command on this file in the dash S mode, which means to standard out. The dash B says drop the Elasticsearch bulk import header that's required. And then dash Z says, if there's any errors, just die silently. Don't tell me why you died. And then it takes that information and it pipes over to JQ. And here what JQ is doing is it, um, it's running the, with the dash C option, which says the, I want compact output. And it's saying, take my input, pipe it through the select command and pull any UIDs with this same string that we just saw earlier in our Kibana instance, where it pulled a hundred and some odd instances. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like at the command prompt. Here we are at the command prompt on my MacBook. And what you see is the find command earlier that I showed you with JQ as the output with that uh, ZQ ID. And you can see it streams, it kept going on down the bottom and I. Not going to bore you with it. It's the hundred and some odd lines that we saw in Kibana, but this is the textual output, and we got it the same way. Or we got it using Zeek 2 es but instead of putting it into a full text index and being able to get within seconds like we did with Kibana, we have to wait. <laughs> so if we have a bunch of files, we got to wait for it to crawl the files. Um, in um, this particular instance, I'm showing you it's just fine, so it crawls them serially, but we can crawl our file system and hand it to the parallel command and get the output like this as well if we really wanted to beef it up. So the one thing I want to get out of this is you don't necessarily need Elasticsearch as long as you have the JQ command installed in your command line. You can still do some pretty powerful uh, JSON filtering and you don't have to get dirty with the awk and so forth. Welcome back. This is the point where I'd usually take questions, but obviously in a recorder format, that's a little hard. But I will say, I am on Zeke's open source Slack server um, under my name, Keith Jones. Just look me up there. Feel free to hit me in any of the public rooms or DM me if you got a question. Um, I'm usually on it almost every day, so um, I'll try to answer pretty quickly. And if you enjoyed this uh, presentation too, uh, let me know. Let me know what uh, what types of research to open source and what um, just kind of doesn't doesn't get a lot, as much as my attention. So uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy this, and we'll see you back online.